I want to go to the Giggles Fair 2023. I would like, before starting, I would like to thank the nice invitation for Antonio and Steph for having us here. It's a very nice city, very nice place, the, the best food of the world, so it will be uh, really a very nice meeting. I would also like to thank Richard Gross, President of the IEG, and Peter Tunisian, Vice President of the IEG, for being here. Because, uh, you know, uh, GIGOS uh, is under the umbrella of IEG, and without the support of IEG, we are not able to, to come forward. Um, and of course, every one of you uh, is welcome to be here and the uh, online participants. Uh, the idea of this uh, presentation is to provide some background uh, about why we are here. So, uh, all we know that geodesy is the science that determines the earth size, shape, gravity field, and um, orientation of rotation uh, of the earth as functions of uh, space, space and time. We, uh, uh, geodesists, understand the earth uh, on these three components. To, to determine these properties of the Earth, we use different sensors on the Earth's surface, close to the Earth's surface, and also in space. All techniques based uh, on the space, um, on the space observations, are important to have a complete or a comprehensive global uh, picture of the Earth while the terrestrial techniques are necessary to determine uh, with higher resolution in time and space some particular features of the Earth that cannot be registered by the space techniques. Uh, we think the Earth from this point of view, but in the reality we are working on a very much complex system. The Earth is composed by different elements. Uh, every, um, um, all of them high correlated. And the changes in the Earth size, shape, gravity field, and orientation are usually a response of any change uh, in the interaction of these different elements um, component the Earth system. Any change in the, in the Earth system is reflected or monitored or registered by any genetic observations. In some cases with a stronger uh, signals, in other cases with less uh, strong uh, signals, but any change, affect, uh, any change in the Earth system affects any genetic observation. And uh, this is the reason because to, to achieve his primary goals of determining the earth size, shape, gravity field, and orientation, geodesy is necessarily, necessarily involved in the detection and analysis of the different signals uh, emitted by the earth system. From this pers perspective, geodesy is not only providing or generating coordinates, the station coordinates, or the geoid, or the uh, earth orientation parameters. The geodesy is providing much more products that are describing the complexity of the system in terms of mathematical equations or physical models. Uh, you can see here, more or less, uh, the direct uh, products we get from, from the gravity or, or geometry for the geometry, geometry and kinematics studies of the Earth. Here you can see some products related to the gravity field modeling and a direct products from the study of the rotation and orientation of the Earth. But, but there are also combined products, and this combined, most of these combined products are telling us how the Earth system uh, is changing and how the Earth system how the behavior of the system is. Uh, 
And it's clear we we need to have precise a precise representation and connection between what we are observing and we, what we are obtaining as genetic results. How is working today? Uh, from the IEG, the International Association of Geodesy, is the global organization responsible for the advancement of geodesy. It was established 160 years ago. And we have as objective to determine these properties of the earth, and as input, we have the observations provided by these different techniques. Uh, to, to satisfy these requirements, the determination of the geometry gravity orientation of the Earth, the IEG had um, a specific commissions for each field of geodesy. So, Commission 1 reference frames, Commission 2 gravity field, and Commission 3 uh, rotation, earth rotation, and, and geodynamics. And we have a fourth commission positioning and applications because, because without UIC, we don't have GPS, we, don't, we will not have uh, Google, and we will not have an uh, application system. So, applications and positioning and applications. Um, in addition to the uh, decommissions, the IEG had also intercommission committees and projects. These, the intercommission committees and projects are are um, covering the scope of many components, many uh, commissions of the IEG, and they are convening uh, colleagues working in different uh, fields of, of the US. And the, the main, the main uh, objective of the commissions, in the commission committees and projects, is to address key scientific issues and advance the theory for geodesy. And then we have the services. The services are, I would say, the treasure of the IEG. We have more or less one service for each observation technique, you know, for GPS, for GNLS, we have IGS, for adults we have IGS, and more, um, something similar for the, for the gravity observation of the Earth. And the, the IEG services are something that is unique in the IEG. There is no other international non-profit organization that gives this kind of structure uh, for free, because we, we can get the products of the services uh, without paying. And in addition, the colleagues involved in the IEG services don't get extra money for doing the activities and belonging to the services. And in addition, the IEG services facilitates the coordination of the geodetic activities globally. They are networking not only by means of geodetic instruments, but also by means of people or colleagues. They are really global working groups. And if we observe this picture uh, in, in the total, in the, in the whole spectrum, uh, we can say that, that the uh, IEG determines and provides the framework for monitoring and understanding their system. And so considering the different components of their system uh, fluid, and solid and gaseous. And this framework is called the, job, the global genetic observing system. And so all of these components conforming the International Association of Geodesy is what we call the global genetic observing system of the International Association of Geodesy. Uh, this is very nice. We have a lot of progress, but we have to face some changes. Uh, we geologists <laughs> used to have here the geometry of the Earth, here the gravity field of the Earth, and here the orientation of the Earth. We need to ensure a combination and an integration of these three different fields of geodesy. So we, we have to try to identify and ensure that 
The same standards, conventions, models, and parameters are being used in the different data analysis in geodesy. We have tried to combine the geometric, gravimetric, and earth orientation observations in order to determine exactly the same signal of the system Earth using the different input data we are collecting. Uh, we know oh, that geodesy is providing some information that is, is relevant for society. So there is many byproducts of geodesy that for us are probably the storming elements, but these geodetic disturbing elements are, are essential for, for, uh, for other sciences and for society. Uh, but we have, well, we lost a little bit the connection to the uh, outer uh, world. So it is necessary to identify which needs can be uh, addressed by geodesy and we have to define the requirements for accuracy, time resolution, and consistency of these geodetic products oriented to solve specific needs. Um, we cover, so the IEG is covering many, many geodetic techniques with, with the services, but there are still some gaps. There are still some techniques that are not properly addressed uh, deeply by the IG, and we have to make geodesy visible. Outside geodesy, nobody knows what geodesy is. So we, we need to, to put geodesy uh, in the focus of the other uh, earth sciences and of society. To address the challenges, say the IG, so we, we have a strong uh, organizational structure, but we need a group of people that concentrate in these challenges and uh, take care of the day-to-day -day business for really implementing, maintaining, and ensuring uh, the global uh, geodetic service system. These operational components of people working on that um, is also called GIMOS. And this operational component it should serve as a clearinghouse for clearinghouse for genetic information and expertise to provide an integration for a framework internally for the IEG components so that we can combine, interact, and standardize. And this operational component should also act as a central interface between science and society. Uh, very quickly about the history of GIMBOS, the initial ideas were discussed in a symposium in, in, uh, a symposium in Munich towards an integrated global genetic service system. Um, based on the conclusions of that symposium, on that symposium, it was decided to establish GIMBOS as the first IAG project, and IAG project is, is the main focus of all components of IAG. Uh, in 2001, was also installed and planning committee, so to define vision, mission, and objectives of GIMOS, and then the implementation committee, the implementation committee, concentrated on defining the, the best possible infrastructure to support uh, the implementation of GIMOS. In 2003, IEG becomes uh, a member of the group on observances, uh, um, Group on Earth Observations and simultaneously GIGOS becomes a component of the global Earth Observation System of Systems together with the, for instance, the Global Ocean Observation System, the Global Climate Observation System. In 2007, uh, the GIGOS project is declared as an IEG component at the same level of, of commissions and services. And at that time, they start, we start to identify that one of the main requirements uh, to implement GIGOS is the geodetic infrastructure. To address the, the missing or the, the necessity to extend the geodetic infrastructure, it was uh, the international committee 
And with this, I wish you a productive meeting and you are very welcome to the Gigos Day 2023. Thank you.